ASIC, also known as the Australian Securities and Investments Commission, has decided to crack down on social media finance influences within Australia. This has sparked a lot of concern for people making content surrounding the topic of finance and has even led to some people announcing that they will no longer be making content covering the topic. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Reese, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the recent guidelines released by ASIC surrounding content being created and published about financial topics by people who do not hold a financial services license within Australia. And I'm going to talk a bit about how it affects the content I personally create and put out on this channel. A five-year prison sentence and fines totaling anywhere up to $1 million for breaching these rules is definitely not something to ignore. So let's break it down by starting with who this directly affects, which is essentially anyone who creates content surrounding a very subset specific set of finance topics, which I'll dive a little bit further into later on in this video, who do not hold what's known as an AFS license or an Australian financial services license, which is not a necessarily easy license to obtain. The creators that I'm referring to are known as social media finance influencers. And generally speaking, most of them probably do not hold an AFS license, myself included. And for some reason, the name Finfluencer seems to have latched on, which is really kind of gross and I don't like it at all. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to be referring to them as financial influencers. And having this title probably probably means that these people have some type of audience who are regularly absorbing this information, whether it's presented in a video format or a text format through social media platforms. And just to name a few of the more common ones, this is going to be things like YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and potentially personal blogs. These platforms have given creators the opportunity to speak pretty freely without any sort of regulation for some time now. However, we have now seen ASIC release guidelines, which are intended to curb what these financial influencers are allowed to talk about specifically in an attempt to regulate unlicensed financial advice being presented to the public, which means that anyone who does actually provide financial advice through these platforms without an AFS license may be subject to the penalties that I mentioned earlier. Now, the main focus of these guidelines, as I mentioned earlier, is intended to stop unlicensed people and unlicensed businesses from providing unlicensed financial product advice, which is a good thing because it doesn't necessarily mean that talking about the topic of finance in general is completely off the table. These guidelines also do not include certain topics in the finance space, such as cryptocurrency and property as property is not a financial product under the Corporations Act. And also as per the guidelines, a YouTuber such as myself is able to share factual information that describes the features or terms and conditions of a financial product or a class of financial products without giving financial product advice. So if I'm talking in general terms about a company that's listed on a share market or a financial product that exists in general in the world, and I do not indicate or recommend that you buy or sell this stock or that you use this particular financial product, then no laws should have been broken and we should be able to move on with our day. Which really is my first sigh of relief in terms of these guidelines and the content that I put out on this channel. For me personally, I try to create content that talks about the pros and cons, the potential risks, and any relevant factual information that is needed to be insightful about a specific financial topic that I'm covering. I do not ever recommend that people make financial decisions based on the topic that I'm discussing. And most of the time, the topics that I'm talking about generally cover financial concepts, which are not financial advice based. They're more like, how does this thing work? And what is it such as what a offset bank account is or what the hell negative gearing is. Where in my videos, I'm not recommending a financial product to anyone, nor am I recommending a company to go through to use or access it specifically. In simple terms, I'm explaining what they are and how they work. And I have done this since I first started posting videos on the channel because I know that the words that I say can have consequences. I try very, very hard to provide my viewers with the tools that they need to continue on with their own independent research. I think it's very important for people to come to their own conclusions, especially when making financial decisions. Where once they come to their own conclusions, it's them deciding how they want to manage their finance without the influence influence of me recommending something, but them having the information they need to actually go out, continue researching a specific product or 
share or whatever it is that I'm talking about, and then they can come to those conclusions. I think it's a really healthy way for someone to make decisions without the influence of others. And it's very important that people follow this path because at the end of the day, the person who is taking that risk and taking on that risk is the person who is making the choice to invest their money. And I am not the person taking on that risk. It is the person who might be watching this video, who might be learning something about a specific topic, but ultimately it is them coming to this conclusion to do that and take Take that step. That's where I'm going with this little saga. And that's why I'm really glad about this guideline existing because I do not believe I'm breaching any of those guidelines with the type of content I create. The second guideline worth mentioning is that affiliate links are no longer allowed based on a few specific criteria, which includes when a creator promotes a link for followers to access an AFS licensees trading platform to trade financial products and that link is unique where it can only be accessed from the person who provides it. Or if you receive a payment from the licensee for each click through resulting in use of the platform or people that access the link also receive a benefit when buying the products because of your unique link. Now, this is important to understand that a lot of the links that I provide on the channel are things like Amazon links to books. This isn't necessarily me breaking laws, it's me showing you where you can access something and there is a little bit of a kickback, which is great. What this is focusing on is like specifically trading platforms that entice people to invest their money in specific stocks and they incentivize them to join by offering them nice deals. This is one where I had to be a bit careful and I combed back over a lot of my videos and have since removed any of those links that would potentially breach those guidelines. And I'm sure there are plenty of others who have done the exact same thing because affiliate links have been a large revenue new raiser for people who create content with much bigger audiences than myself. This guideline also expands further into sponsorships specifically being featured within creators videos where before these guidelines were released, you probably would see videos popping up where people would have a 30 second to one minute clip within promoting a financial product or company that you can click on an affiliate link or sign up today using their special code and get a kickback from it. Or they were actually being paid by these sponsors to make this content, which is now no longer allowed. And thankfully I have not taken on any sponsors or promoted them in my videos where I've been getting some type of kickback or payment to promote a specific product. And I've tried to keep it this way because like I said earlier, I want people to come to their own conclusions. I do not want to give people the impression to use a specific product based on me getting a kickback by recommending it, which leaves my only income source on the channel being YouTube revenue, which is views. And that's not a problem apparently to the guidelines because I have no control over what ads are played on my videos, nor do I have any way to control what is recommended to my viewers through these ads. One really other important point that came from the guidelines is that ASIC want creators to publish content that is as accurate and as balanced as possible, meaning misinformation and misguided information could potentially see these creators breaking the law. This again is something I'm really glad to see being introduced because I believe the content that I put out on this channel falls well within this space, along with a lot of the other social media finance influences within Australia. A lot of the other channels seem to be on the same path. It's a topic that we all have a passion for. We really like discussing it. And most of the big ones at play fall within this category of accurate and balanced content. One problem I do see coming into play that ASIC might be digging themselves a hole in regard to is that now that a lot of these channels are gonna be a lot more cautious about what they're talking about, it might open up for creators outside of Australia, which is outside of ASIC's jurisdiction, who pop up and make content which falls under the misinformation or not balanced or not accurate information code of conduct, which ASIC can't do anything about. And these people will potentially make money through scams and pump and dumps, and they can't do anything about it. So it will potentially hurt some of the creators that are trying to do the right thing, which I don't necessarily agree with, especially considering some of these bigger creators. Like I know there are a few of them in Australia who have quit their full-time jobs to pursue this. And now they're going to have to rethink and potentially get some extra qualifications, which are not going to be easy. I know that it's a big commitment to go through it, to get these qualifications, just to continually be able to talk about these openly is going to be very, very interesting to see if they do stick around. And I am interested to see how these guidelines affect them. For me personally, 
I like making videos. I like talking about these topics. It's fun. It's something that I get to learn about as I study specific topics. And in general, what I'm talking about is just general discussion. I'm not specifically recommending anything. Overall, what I'm saying is it's not really going to affect the type of content I put out on this channel because I'm not breaching those guidelines as far as I'm aware, just like a lot of others. However, it will affect some big players and I will probably be sad to see them go if they decide not to continue making the content they're making. Overall, these guidelines are definitely not clear cut. They are ambiguous as hell because ASIC definitely want to leave a broad scope for them to be able to take on anyone who's breaching these guidelines and not punish them, punish is probably the wrong word, but make sure that the content that they're putting out aligns with these rules. And that's probably why they're so ambiguous and so not refined. Time will tell. I think that over the long run, it will affect most content creators who do not have an AFS license in some way or another. It'll be very interesting to see how that comes about. I guess to summarize today's video, for those of you who take the time out of your day to watch these videos, especially the ones that make it this far in all the way to the end, I really do appreciate you taking the time out of your day. So thank you very much for doing that. It really does mean a lot to me that you give your time, even if it's a short period throughout the day to watch these videos. I cannot thank you enough. With that being said, if you enjoyed today's video, if it was informative, if you learned something, please hit that like and subscribe button down below. It really does help the channel grow. I really do appreciate the support and it does not go unnoticed. And I will leave you there. Have a good day, have a good week. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.